Hello, what's up everybody? My name is Carlos Petrago Pinzon, RTRVI. Welcome to my channel, Lazy Bones Radiology. In today's episode, I'll be covering the forearm. But before we start, don't forget to press that like button, subscribe to the channel, and share with your friends so we can all learn together. Let's begin! The Anatomical Position This is when the patient stands erect with the face and eyes facing forward, arms are extended by the sides, hands are facing forward, Heels are together and toes are pointed forward. Also known as the neutral position, do not forget it. The following definitions were gathered from Merrill's Atlas of Radiographic Positioning Procedures. This is a series that I used when I was a student, so I highly recommend it. The forearm. Before we jump into the positioning, we first have to review the forearm's anatomy. The carpal group. Proximal to those are two long bones known as the radius and ulna. When looking at the forearm from an anatomical position, the radius is on the lateral side, while the ulna is on the medial side, as you can see here on my diagram. It is very important not to mix them up. Next is the distal humerus. Let's start with the radius. Located on the lateral side, as you can see here, this is the long bone that allows the hand to pronate and supernate. As you can see here, the distal part of the radius articulates with the carpal bone. This joint is known as the radiocarpal joint. The most distal part of the radius is known as the radial styloid process, as you can see here on the right hand side. Next is the radial body, which makes the majority of the long bone, which continues all the way until you get to the radial tuberosity, as you can see here on the right hand side. Next, moving more proximal, is the radial neck, and finally, the radial head. Now let's talk about the ulna. This is the long bone located on the medial side of the forearm. This is the long bone that articulates mainly with the humerus. Next, the ulna is the bone that allows the arm to flex and extend. The most distal part of the ulna is known as the ulnar head, which contains the ulnar styloid, as you can see here on the right hand side. Next, moving proximal, is the ulnar body, which makes the majority of the long bone, all the way up to the radial notch, as you can see here on the right hand side. This is where the radial head articulates with the proximal part of the ulnar bone. Now let's talk about the proximal ulna. As you can see here, this is the ulnar body. And let's look at the diagram. The ulnar body makes the majority of the long bone. The radial notch is where the radial head articulates primarily with the proximal part of the ulnar bone. And the first landmark that projects anterior from the body is known as the coronoid process. Next is the trochlear notch. This is where the trochlear part of the humerus articulates with the ulna. Lastly, the most proximal part of the ulna is known as the olecranon process. This is the part that stops the arm from bending backwards when you're extending your arm. It is very important to know the proximal part of the ulnar bone. Try not to confuse the coronoid and the olecranon processes. Please make sure to review and be knowledgeable with the anatomy because knowing your anatomy is very important for the positioning. AP projection. This is where a patient is seated, as you can see here. Position of the part is where the hand is placed palmer side up, fingers are extended, and patient is leaning laterally to prevent any rotation, as you can see here. Central ray is perpendicular to mid forearm. Make sure to collimate the entire forearm, including the proximal carpal bones and the distal part of the humerus. SID is 40 inches. And remember to label correctly. Now let's practice. What are we imaging? This is the right forearm. What is the projection? AP projection. What is the position? Hand is supinated or anatomical position. Now let's practice some anatomy the radius, which is on the lateral side, the ulna, medial side, the radial styloid, this is the most distal part of the radius bone, the radial head, neck, and the tuberosity. Next is the ulnar styloid, which is the most distal part of the ulnar bone, and the humerus. Lateral projection, or lateral medial projection. The patient is seated, as you can see here. Position of the part. Hand is placed on the lateral position or medial side up. It is very important that the radius and ulna are superimposed 
so you can get a proper lateral projection. Centroid is perpendicular to the mid forearm. And make sure to collimate the entire forearm, including the proximal carpals and the distal humerus. Arms at a 90 degree angle and make sure the epicondyles of the humerus are superimposed. SID is 40 inches. Remember to label correctly. Now let's practice. What are we imaging? This is a right forearm. What is the projection? Lateral medial projection. What is the position? Lateral. Now let's practice some anatomy. These are your carpal bones, superimposed. The radius, which is located on the lateral side. Next is the ulna, which is on the medial side. The ulna head. Next is the radial head, neck, and the tuberosity. Coronoid process. Olecranon process. And the distal humerus. For the forearm, there is no special projections or methods. It's only the AP and lateral, so it's a very short video. Make sure to practice with your friends and your family so you can get better in your positioning. Practice, 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 and remember to study your anatomy. Review your basics so you can reinforce your positioning skills. This concludes today's video. I hope you enjoyed. Remember to press the like button and subscribe to the channel and share with your friends so we can all learn together. Also follow me on lazybones underscore radiology. Thank you. You guys have a great day.